was known here and there and just about everywhere else as Prince Brat. Not even black cats would cross his path. One night the tutor, Master Peckwit, bellowed, You fetal faddled scholar! One day you'll be king, and you still don't know the alphabet from pig tracks. I can always get someone to read for me. Ah, it'd be easier to educate a boiled cabbage. Prepare to be punished, your lordship. Oh, ten wax at least, and good and hard if you please. The prince had nothing to fear. He had never been spanked in his life. He was a prince, and it was forbidden to whip a prince. Jemmy, a common boy, was kept in the castle to be punished in his place. Fetch the whipping boy! Hmm. On your feet, me boy. Ain't I already been whipped twice today? What's the prince done now? Let's not keep him waiting, lad. <laughs> Jemmy didn't bawl. He didn't yelp or bellow. Ten wax, and not a sound escaped his lips. I'm onto you, Jemmy, from the streets. It's pure spite that you won't howl. Think you can cross me and get away with it? Ha! Never a no-how! Hm. And so it went for more than a year. The prince learned nothing. The whipping boy learned to read and write. Prince Brat was known, but he was also hated by everyone and favored by none. He often got bored and wreaked havoc wherever he went. Jemmy, before his life in the castle, worked as a rat catcher, roaming the streets and sewers every day. But then, Jemmy was taken from town to be the prince's whipping boy. When he wasn't being whipped, he received personal tutoring. One night, the prince got so bored, he decided to run away, taking Jemmy with him. Riding on a royal stolen steed in a foggy moonlit forest, they veered off track and soon got lost. Then, out of the tangled trees, came two murderous thieves, Cutwater and Hold Your Nose Billy, and they seized the two boys. Little did the highwaymen know that they seized the prince himself. The Whipping Boy by Sid Fleischman. Take your hands off me, you insolent rascal! Uh, not much of a catch. Two sparrows. But ain't they trimmed up in fancy rags, Cutwater? Well, uh, ain't they? Got any gold in your pockets, lad? No business of yours. Ah, but so help me, it is my business. Don't you know who I am? A clod and a ruffian. Worse than that, <laughs> ain't you never heard of Hold Your Nose Billy? A famous he is. Put to son as Billy. The murderer? Only in the line of duty. <laughs> so you won't mind if we take your horse and empty your pockets. Not a copper between us. What's in the basket? Hands off, villain. Don't you know who I am? <clears throat> Not a word. Bow to your prince. Bow to what? <laughs> I am Prince Horace. Oh, yeah, and I'm the Grand Turnip of China. Oh, I am. <laughs> I command you to turn us loose, or Papa will hang the pair of you in chains. The empty-headed prince, why'd he brought along his crown? To cock it on his head and expect vagabonds and cutthroats to fall to their knees? <laughs> Bow low, you fools, and be off. Cutwater, what do you reckon a genuine prince is worth? Oh, his weight in gold at least. We'll write the king a ransom note. <clears throat> Accept our <clears throat> hospitality. I'm hungry. <clears throat> now, here's a paper, and there's ink for your prince. Take the hawk's feather and scratch out our message. But I can't write. Oh, yeah, and crows can't fly. You're a prince. Don't think you can pull the wall over our eyes. Hop to it. But I can't so much as write my own name. Hand me the hawk's feather. I'll write the words. Now hold on. This ignorant whipping boy knows his letters, and the prince can't sign his own name. Something's amiss here. What you thinking, Billy? I'm thinking these lads have mixed themselves up to flummox us. Nonsense. I'm a mere whipping boy. Ah, you take us for bedrock numbskulls. Certain as eggs as eggs, you're the prince, the genuine straight up and down royal highness. 
that ratty street orphan, that low-born... Silence! Can you see the game is up? They're on to us. Hold your tongue, you witless servant boy. Servant <laughs> <laughs> boy, dare you address me? <laughs> Bag your head. Give him a kick, Cutwater, if you hear another peep out of him. Hand me the hawk's feather. I'll write my papa. Thank you. <laughs> your obedient son, Prince Horace. Aye, that's a ticket. Now then, what we've got to do is figure out how we can get this to the king without getting nabbed in the act. Simple. My horse. One of the king's own. A horse can always find his way home. That fine beast will make for the castle stables. No questions asked. All right. As soon as I'm within a squint of the castle, I'll turn this beast loose. Cutwater gave his heavy partner a foot up into the royal saddle. <laughs> In the rickety timbered hut, Jemmy's eyes swung to the doorway. He flung the door open and ran, with Prince Brat following in his tracks. By late morning, they caught sight of the road to the city. Lay off! Go back to the castle! I'll go back to the castle when I'm ready, when I choose, and not a moment before. The, the, the highwaymen! Cutwater! The prince! And the whipping boy! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> ah, trick to me, did you, Prince Brat? Well, here's a whipping you won't never forget. Uh, here's the whipping boy. Oh, harder! You didn't raise a peep out of him! Harder! But Prince Brat just skirted himself for the next blow. From the top of the embankment came a roar. A bear came snarling down the embankment. Cutwater dropped the prince, and Cutwater and Billy were off like greyhounds. Ah! <laughs> Why didn't you yell and bellow? That's what they wanted to hear. And humble myself. You never did. Prince Brat. Is that what everyone calls me? Does everyone hate me? M more than likely. <laughs> what about you, Jemmy? Well, I did. But maybe I don't. I don't know. Let's be on our way. We're going back to the castle. Oh, no thank you, Prince. Your pa will hang me. Now, I don't fancy doing a jig at the end of a rope. Not likely. I won't go back to the castle unless you go with me. Do you trust me? I don't know. I suppose I do trust you. Then follow me. A pair of golden doors were opened, and they were ushered into the throne room. Jemmy, you are to be whipped. Yes, my lord. Prince Bat has done enough mischief to wear out the hides of a dozen whipping boys. He tells me it's thanks to you that he's back, sound and safe. The king thanks you. You are placed under the prince's protection under one condition. He has promised to do his lessons, blow out his night candle, and otherwise behave himself. He must want me for a friend awful bad to promise all that. It's a friend he ran off looking for. It's a friend he found. Dismissed, both of you. But do change out of those smelly clothes. You got me off, off without so much as a single whack. Well, I couldn't handle all the yowling and bellowing. Well, I wouldn't yowl and bellow. Uh, but I would, Jemmy. Uh, one more thing. If you boys decide to run away again, take me with you. <laughs> share your time. I am sick, so I don't want to pass that along through handshake. But I do appreciate your time today. Your time was nice.